I was given 20 X company phones that had been replaced around the time the iPhone 4 came out. Since then, they've been sitting in storage until handed to me. For an otherwise uneventful phone lot, there is something really strange that's happening to every single Palm Trio 750 in this lot. They're melting. And for anyone who collects or has older devices like phones or consoles, you may have come across this before. The rubberized coating is breaking down and the rubber is returning back to a liquid. Something I'd like to rectify. I received all these phones in a shopping bag, six of which are HTC Neon 200 phones. Not only don't I have the proper charger for these, I wasn't even able to find anything out about this model of phone other than one photo showing the device running Windows Mobile. Next are five Palm Trio Pros. These are the most interesting of the bunch, with a full keyboard and non-sticky plastic. I even got one with its original box. It's quite gross looking as some of the other melted rubber from the other Palm phones has transferred onto this one. There was also one Samsung branded phone, again with no charger. One interesting thing about it though is it has a larger battery installed and the inclusion of what I presume is either a volume or scroll wheel on the side. All of the remaining 8 phones are the same Palm Trio 750s. Just pulling them out of the bag gives you an idea just how sticky they've become. I'm not sure what triggers the rubber to disintegrate, likely just time, but oddly none of the rubberized backs on the HTC phones have turned this way. Regardless, rubber isn't the best material to make a phone housing out of, even if it does provide a more grippy surface. Along with every one of these phones melting, they're also expanding because every single battery has expanded, likely due to being left in a discharged state for so long. I did also get one of these models with its original box and accessories. And it's no surprise, this one has melted too. It's so sticky, the back came off when I pulled the phone out of the box. But with the back removed, we can see it too has an expanded battery. While not having a great interest in these phones, I do want to see if I can make them less sticky. It's so bad that if you pick one up, you can't even drop it. I guess there's a selling point for kids, always on hand and impossible to drop. The solution? Alcohol, and a lot of it. For the phone that is. It's not made from solid rubber, rather just plastic that's been covered with a once solid rubberized coating. The alcohol will help break it down further and allow us to scrape it away. Despite coming off quite quickly in a goo-like material, this process proved to be very time consuming because you needed to repeat it several times as it still remained tacky after one treatment. I also used some adhesive remover to finish off each section after I had removed all the goo. The front was next and that was made even more difficult because of the tiny spacing between the keys and buttons. With all the gunk removed, you can see just how much better it looks, although the plastic tools have left some marks in the plastic. To do this process to every phone would be greatly time consuming and something I won't be doing. But with one cleaned, we should see if they work. Thankfully, I got heaps of charges, so power wasn't an issue. But getting it to show any signs of life was another story. In fact, none immediately responded when plugged in. It wasn't until I left one attached for a while before it booted up. Although not worth it, with a clean and new batteries, they should all work. It doesn't take long before I find an odd dialog box saying that the phone is currently off, asking if I'd like to switch it on. Tapping yes, the phone restarts to the phone dialer. Maybe it meant aeroplane mode? Either way, the rest of the OS is just as clunky. As for the specs, it has a 300 MHz processor, 50 MB of RAM and is running Windows 6, dated from 2007. Despite powering on while connected to the charger, the battery charge still remained at 0%, and with the power button only rebooting the phone, the only way I could shut it down was to unplug it. 
The newer Trio Pro phones, however, are all round much better. All they need is a good clean with some alcohol and a cloth. As they use the micro USB port, they can be charged easily and as their batteries haven't expanded, they still charge up just fine. Again, these run Windows Mobile 6, but perform much better. You'll still mostly need to use a stylus to get around the interface, but the screen and keyboard is much better than the Trio 750. Having never used these phones before, I was able to type quite well. But it isn't without problems. The stylus has a brittle end that snaps very easily. While age could be a factor, many of the other Trio Pro styluses are also missing this plastic end. And just like the other older Palm phones, the power button doesn't shut down the phone, just reboots it. In fact, as soon as you put the battery in, it turns on. Who thought that was a good feature? So, out with the battery it is. So this is it. A lot of old and obsolete Windows Mobile devices. We did find a way to resurrect the melting phones and even tinker with them a bit, but I think an Aussie fellow YouTuber would enjoy them more than me. So I'm going to send these over to Jana's cycle. He loves old Palm devices, so I'm sure he can have some fun with these. And on that note, this has been a huge Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the TechLot playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.